Hi there. You'll probably already be familiar with the importance of not plagiarising the work of other authors in your own written composition. But did you know that you can also plagiarise your own work? If not, then you might want to watch the rest of this video to avoid inadvertently doing this at some point in the future. Given that plagiarism is often defined as using the words and or ideas of other authors in your own work without appropriate acknowledgement, you may wonder how it's even possible to self-plagiarise. After all, if you reuse work that you originally composed without proper acknowledgement, then surely the only person being deprived of credit is, well, you. Therefore, it does seem strange that self-plagiarism is regarded as an academic offence. Indeed, research has indicated that students, and sometimes staff, can find the issue of self-plagiarism rather confusing. For example, sometimes students think that it's okay to reuse previous work without citing and quoting that work appropriately. This can often be compounded by institutional ambiguity or inconsistency with regards to the policy on self-plagiarism. And sometimes lecturers erroneously assume that students are already familiar with the concept of self-plagiarism, when in point of fact they're not. In my view, some of the confusion around the concept of self-plagiarism probably reflects the fact that the term self-plagiarism doesn't capture the unacceptable behaviour as directly as it might. I prefer to use the term recycling work because self-plagiarism occurs when you attempt to surreptitiously reuse or recycle all or part of a piece of work that you've previously composed in a subsequent piece of work. So why is self-plagiarism or recycling work considered unacceptable? Well, to understand this, it's useful to think about the work you submit for academic credit as functioning a little bit like currency in that if you spend a sum of money on a particular product, that sum of money is spent, i.e. it's not available for making future purchases. To regain that sum of money, you'd need to go out and do some additional work. It kind of works the same way with academic work, in that when you submit a piece of academic work for academic credit, that piece of work is effectively considered spent. To earn future academic credit, you'd need to do further work. You can't simply reproduce or recycle previous work for future academic credit. I suppose in the same way that you can't photocopy money and then spend the photocopied money on additional future purchases. For students, the rules on self-plagiarism are there to try and level the assessment playing field and ensure that all students are expected to produce original work for every assessment they undertake which prevents students that may have undertaken assessments on similar topics in the past from taking big shortcuts. Professional academics are subject to the same expectations when it comes to self-plagiarism as students, and for similar reasons. This is to stop academics from simply rehashing existing work and publishing it in multiple sources. Such redundant publication would add nothing to the body of knowledge on that particular topic. In fact, it would probably distort it. It would also create a really misleading impression of how productive that academic was being. And of course, it would waste the time of editorial teams on books and journals, whose time would be much better invested in dealing with the submissions of authors that hadn't already published the same work elsewhere. So what does all of this mean for you as a student in terms of avoiding self-plagiarism? Well, first and foremost, when you get set an assessment, you must regard that assessment as a new piece of work. You shouldn't be looking to incorporate bits and pieces of previous submissions into the work that you're currently doing. When it comes to referring to work that you've previously done, the same rules concerning citation and quotation apply to your own work as they do to referring to the work of others. So, for example, if you wanted to refer to an idea that you put forward in a previous piece of work, you need to cite that piece of work. If you want to use text that you've used in a previous piece of work, then you need to quote that text in the work that you're currently doing. 
This way you'll be in transparent about your use of previous work and you're not trying to misrepresent work that's been submitted before as original work. Avoiding self-plagiarism doesn't mean that you have to find entirely original sources for the assessment you're currently working on if sources you've referred to in previous assessments happen to be applicable. But what it does mean is that your composition around these sources would need to be original. But this would be the case even in the absence of rules concerning self-plagiarism, because the composition you've produced in the past around a particular source will have been orientated to satisfy the demands of that particular assessment. And of course, the assessment you're working on now will very likely have different demands. So the composition you've used previously would no longer be fit for purpose in any case. Just remember that the fact that you've cited and referenced a particular source in a previous piece of work does not negate the need to cite and reference that source once again in the work at hand. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please do hit the like button. If you haven't already, why not subscribe to my channel for more videos on how psychology can help you study more effectively. If you want to know when I post new content, just turn on the notification bell. Thanks very much. Thank you.